Hello, everybody. Welcome to Immortal Fury. I'm Dean. I'm Chris. Glad you joined us. Uh, we've got a, a new camera here. Chris is using his new iPhone to uh, film, and so hopefully, uh, maybe we're in 4K today. And maybe <laughs> maybe we look a little better. I don't know. Sound a little better. It's going to take a lot to make me look a little better. <laughs> camera looks good. Yeah. All that. Yeah. Technology. So hopefully. Uh, Hopefully it looks good to you too. Uh, we're going to uh, bring you more about the secret today, and we're just going to read a, a little from uh, A. Knox commentary and from Paul's letters. Yeah, of course. So uh, I'm going to start right there in First Corinthians uh, chapter two, and this is from the commentary. So I'm going to read a little bit here, and then Chris is going to read from the actual letter. So, A. Knox commentary, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 says, Eloquent appeals, logical arguments, or profound philosophy have no place in the proclamation of the evangel. We are to proclaim the word, testify to the truth, yeah, and testify to the truth. The subject matter is all provided by God. Nothing would have appealed to the Corinthians better than some new philosophy or some astute line of reasoning. But faith does not rest on reason, but on a message backed by the power of the Spirit of God. What is needed today is a return to the simple, unadorned proclamation of the Evangel, the death of Christ on the cross for our sins and the resurrection of Christ because of our justification. The power of this good news is as great today as it proved to be in Corinth. And that's just the start of two. And so listen to this. Listen to Paul's letter. Yeah, it's uh, 1 Corinthians 2.1. Um, I'm also going to read, I think, 2 and 3. And I, coming to you, brethren, came not with superiority of word or of wisdom, announcing to you the testimony of God. For I decide not to perceive anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to be with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my word and my heralding were not with the pervasive, persuasive words of human wisdom, but with demonstration of spirit and of power, that your faith may not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So in those, it looks like um, five verses, clearly, Paul is saying that it's not of him. He's not using persuasive words. He doesn't have superiority of word or wisdom. He's, he's shrinking himself from the message mm -hmm. and he's appealing to the Corinthians of the superiority of God's word. And in A. E. Knox. I like how he starts, eloquent appeals, logical arguments, or profound philosophies. Um, he talks about, in some of there, he talks about uh, new philosophies or uh, new ways of saying things. So none of this stuff matters. None of these pretty words, none of these flowery speeches stick with the gospel. Stand on the gospel. Just stick with that. You can't do any better than that. I like how Michael says, mm -hmm. after he reads something for Paul, he goes, I can't add to that. Yeah, we love that. That's awesome. That's a Good great that, statement Michael. that he's saying. He's not going to add to it. He's not going to take from himself and try to embellish that because it stands alone. Mm -hmm. And that's a great thing. But, and we might as well read on. Mm -hmm. right? So starting at verse 6, that we're in chapter 2 of 1 Corinthians, Yet wisdom are we speaking among the mature. Yet a wisdom not of this eon, neither of the chief men of this eon, who are being discarded. But we are speaking God's wisdom in a secret. Wisdom which has been concealed, which God designates before, before the eons for our glory which not of the chief men of this eon knows, for if they know, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So again, 
Mm -hmm. We are showing how superior God's wisdom is to man's. We are talking about this eon. Yeah, we're still in the same eon. We're important. still in the same eon. We just mentioned that this letter was written 53, 54 AD. And this is the eon that Christ was crucified. Right, in. nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. Within our time, right, within right. this message. And, and like Dean was saying off camera, imagining who these people are in their mind when they're reading Paul's letters, they're thinking of the chief men in their uh, immediate population, their uh, chief scribes, uh, rabbis, uh, kings. Mm -hmm. That's who they're thinking about while they're reading this. Now we go forward to our time. We're reading it. And we're thinking of all of the people, chief people, um, and where is their wisdom in this message? And we're being told by Paul, or excuse me, by A.E. Knock, keep it simple. Stay mm -hmm. with the message. I love that he says we are speaking, uh, but we are speaking God's wisdom in a secret wisdom which has been concealed mm -hmm. concealed by who who's concealing this message um and then who's hearing this message whose ears does this message prick people ask us well why are you guys right how do you have it right mm -hmm. why aren't you know and everyone might think they have it right so that would be something to consider or challenge yourself to see if you really believe the things that Paul's talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, do you believe those simple truths that you are in Christ and right that we are ambassadors and yeah, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is sufficient, right? And does provide salvation and does take sin away because, like being in Adam, you're also in Christ. The same things that apply to us in Adam mm -hmm. can apply in Christ. So you can look those things up and see if you really believe that. Right. Or if you're under the message of, like my past and my own self-inflicted desires was constantly about things, what do I need to do? What must I do? And now looking back, the messaging that I got was a lot about that. A lot of times scripture is used, but the uh, approach, mm -hmm. <laughs> the approach present mm -hmm. that Chris was talking about earlier um, the approach is what you need to do, what you must do to believe these things. Or right. To, and it's all about you. A it's response. To, right. Instead of, of seeing kind. what Paul's saying, what's been done by our Heavenly Father uh, through his son. Right. He mentioned, right. Dean men mentioned the approach present. Uh, my brother Jason shared with me this week. Uh, he sent me the link to a biblical resources, Clyde Pilkington site, Clyde Pilkington, the approach present was the name of the video. And he asked me if I get a chance to watch it. It's a 44 minute video. I'll link it. It's fantastic. I'll yes, link it. He'll yep. link it. This is what we're talking about. This secret, this wisdom that, uh, speaking God's wisdom in a secret that has been concealed. Listen to this here. From an, this is from an article here. Substitution or inclusion? This may wrap us up here. Yeah. We'll see. God's method of salvation is inclusion, not substitution. That's a really big thing. This is yeah. a neat article. Yeah. Uh, Christ does not take the place of each sinner of the race as though he were a mere man. He displaces Adam, and his work affects all, even as Adam's has done. He is the second man, as though none had intervened between him and the first. He is the last Adam, in whom there is a new humanity, which will be blessed by his one sacrifice, even as the old humanity was doomed by Adam's single transgression. So that's part of in Adam, mm -hmm. in Christ. Yes. Yep. And the article goes on to explain a lot of that, um, why and why we can accept that. It's just as fact. Things happen. It's not up to you to get yourself in Christ. That's the old message. Right. It was totally up to the human to somehow do this. Um, the why of salvation may be answered by a single word. That's love. 
That's the why. Mm -hmm. So God sets this all up. Yep. And yeah, and God is love. He loves you. Uh, he loves all his creation. He knows what he's doing. It does look messy at times. It does get confusing, heartbreaking when we see what we're subjected to, evil, sin, mm -hmm. death, and all that. But there's a reason behind it to set up this great salvation and to know his love. Right, and we believe in a justification of all of that evil, and it's mm -hmm. going to blow your minds mm -hmm. when that justification comes to a realization. But there is a day coming where that suffering produces some tremendous gifts. Mm -hmm. So hang in there. Right. Um, remember that you are a part of God's wisdom in a secret. And it's being concealed mm -hmm. from some and mm -hmm. shared with others. And we know God likes that small numbers. Mm -hmm. He enjoys revealing those things to chosen people. And we mm -hmm. talked about the 12 disciples. And within the 12 disciples, there was Peter, uh, James, and John. Mm -hmm. And within those three, Jesus expressed a real mm -hmm. affection for John. So God has favorites. And those of us chosen before the disruption of the world, we get the backstage pass. We come in early. So it's a tremendous uh, revelation. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I'm reading in John Essex's book about Ephesians, he, he talks about how our prayers, the more we mature, our prayers start turning more and more into thanksgiving. And as soon as I read that, I thought that's what a lot of my mm -hmm. prayers are today is less about supplication and a lot more about thanksgiving and where I'm at. And so... Interesting in all the things we were taught and all the things we used to beat ourselves up about that you want to do. Mm -hmm. You finally start getting a little bit of a realization, a revelation of God's great power and what he's all about. And then, <laughs> then things start happening to where, oh, now I'm, my prayers became something in Thanksgiving, something that used to be a job, like I'm supposed to be thankful. Right, uh, or, right. You know, you're supposed yep. to have a certain approach or whatever to this way of living. When, to when the more you learn about the greatness of God and his love and what he's really up to, for all people, eventually, it's all coming. Nobody's right. going to be cheated. Um, but when you start coming into it, like you said, then it, it can help. It does definitely help. Right. Hey, please make time this week to watch the video from yep, Clyde that I'll he's going to link because you're going to see the flip coming, but you're still going to be blown away by yeah. it. So... All right, thanks for joining us all. Yeah, have a great week, guys. See you next time. Love you all. Bye.